Six practices in now. I asked you about Gavin the first day. What have you seen from him in that interim, and how's he kind of coming along this time around? He's developing. Um, like most young quarterbacks, it's you know usually a couple steps forward and then a step back, and then a couple steps forward and a step back. So, you know, he's learning. You know, there's there's a lot to learn, and our our goal is you know just can we eliminate making the same mistake twice? There's plenty of new mistakes to make. Let's go make those and learn from those. So, but he's getting better. He's uh, getting rid of the ball more quickly, more decisively, uh, more command of the offense. So it's positive. You seen in terms of the insulation of the offense, how players are picking it up, how they're learning, um, kind of the entire process so far. I think they're doing a good job with it. Uh, I do. I think one of the things is Kirk's system, and the coaches understand that system, and they're really coaching it well. And I think the players are working really hard to understand it, not just memorize it. You know, there's a whole concept in learning. If if you know the why, then you can kind of figure things out and work problems out on your own. If you memorize it, it's got to be just what you memorized. So we're really trying to get these guys to understand the why. It takes longer on the front end, but I believe pays dividends on the back. Uh, Kobe Asimo was a young offensive lineman who really emerged last year. Are there any guys in similar shoes, young guys who didn't play much last year maybe that are kind of impressing you so far in spring camp? Well, there's guys that are going to have to play. You know, um, They are impressing me, but there's still a long way to go to be good enough to, to compete in the Big Ten Conference. So um, I think Ty Needham's one of those guys. I mean, Ty played a little bit, but he's he's getting a lot of playing time. Um, uh, you know, Taj White is coming along. He's a young guy. Amir Stanett, another young guy coming along. Um, you know, Gus Zelinks has played early on out of necessity, but I think he's getting better now. Like he played before he was ready to play. Now he's competing with IB for the job. So, you know, he's really progressed. So there is development, uh, you know, I think that guys are getting better. Coach Flaherty and uh, his staff are doing a good job. It's just, you know, offensive line t play takes a little while, but they're getting better. One of the guys who's new to the team, but certainly a veteran, Brantley, at the wide receiver. What have you seen from him and how does he fit into that room? Well, he's working hard, you know, he's recovering from an injury, so he's, he hasn't really been able to go full speed yet, but he's working hard, he's learning well. Uh, I think it'll be training camp before we really know, you know, what he's capable of. And there'll be, you know, there's going to be a competition in training camp at the receiver spot with a lot of guys, you know, fighting it out for, for reps. Outside of the expected guys and the guys you mentioned to Brian's question, uh, is there anybody that really surprised you or caught your eye that uh, you care to mention for the spring? It's always a tough one, right, because you leave somebody out that, you know, um, I think some of the guys that you saw coming on at the end of last year are continuing that. I think Troy Rainey's continuing to play like a Big Ten defensive lineman. Uh, Zaire Angoy starting to show signs. You know, they're big men, really big men, but that's the Big Ten, right? And uh, we need those guys to come in and give us plays. We know the veteran guys that have played. We know what they can do. We're going to need some of these guys to, to, to give us, you know, 15, 20 plays a game. And uh, when you spread it out up there, you know how we like to play a lot of guys up front. When you spread it out, guys are fresh, guys are prepared, right, because they know they're getting in the game. Uh, so that's always our goal, to have a, have a great eight to ten man rotation working on the front. Um, sorry. With the uh, season that Tyreen Powell had, um, how do you want to see him kind of build on that and kind of take the next step forward? I think physically he's done that. You know, you look at him physically, he's a bigger man. Uh, if he can do that every year, he's going to be a gigantic. I mean, he's very six foot five. He's, he's up to almost 240 now. Um, I think just him maturing, you know, I look at his freshman picture, he's a baby face, and now he looks like a man. So I think that, along with the understanding of the defense, you know, Coach Heatherman working with him again for a second time now, hearing it a second time. I always said to you guys, you know, that, that second loop, that second time you're going through the cycle, uh, things make a lot more sense. And what I see is he's really reacting very quickly, and he looks very comfortable just kind of playing his position. And he's good in the pass game and the run game. So I think, you know, with, with some of the depth that we've been able to create at the linebacker position, that could be a real strength. Max Bowen is a guy who I think it's fair to say will garner some NFL interest, a lot of eyes on him this season. Where have you seen him grow this offseason? What do you think is really his ceiling, his potential? How, how good can he be 
you know, how much can you develop through this offseason into next year? Well, Max can be as, as good as we've had. I mean, he's physically very gifted. He's become very focused, uh, very, very focused on becoming a, a big-time uh, cornerback. So he studies it. He takes care of his body. He's, uh, he's all about it. So I think that uh, he's got a chance. And, you know, it's, it's a tough position, right? I mean, so much of the time it's just you and that receiver, and the entire crowd knows if you won or you lost. And uh, he's got the right temperament for that. He's a competitor. Uh, and, again, physically gifted, just really, really gifted. So we, we are very excited about our cornerback room as a whole. And, uh, you know, I think Max, Max and Bean lead that room, you know. I know you've talked about Pat Flaherty in the past and what he's bring, but in terms of experience, what have you seen from him this spring and what has he been able to instill with that group, a young group? Well, I think there's a confidence there, you know, that he's done it at the highest level. Um, he's done it with all pros, yet he's done it with college kids over his career. So I think our guys understand how fortunate they are, and I think they really listen, eyes wide open, ears wide open, and are trying to soak in as much as they can. Uh, you know, it's no secret that's the position where we really must make the, the strides, you know, to get the running game going, which will open up the passing game and, and all the things that we want to do on offense. So it starts up front. We're making progress. It's going to be a race against time. Being a former linebacker last year, I'm sure I was a little nervous for you with the depth on this team. What about this year? Well, I like our linebacker depth. As, you know, as we talked about a little bit, uh, you know, with Mo Ture, you, know, you have Reem, you have uh, Dion. Then you have a bunch of young, good players too, uh, that are that are behind them. Um, so I think we just got to keep developing, developing those guys, trying to work them into different packages. But to have three, what I call three starters for the two spots, um, that's that's good, right? So we can rotate guys and, and keep them fresh. You know, last year, those guys played darn near every snap until Dion couldn't anymore, right? So it does wear on you. <clears throat> but if you can have guys playing 700 to 750 snaps in a season rather than 1,000 to 1,100 snaps, that's kind of in that range is where things happen sometimes, injuries. So we're, we're going to try to have them in that sweet spot somewhere, you know, God willing, in the 700, 750 range and rotate them so they're all, they're all fresh and they're all feeling better towards the end of the year. Um, I know Reggie Sutton was facing a long road back. Is there any chance you think at any point this season he could be – in the mix? Man, I hope so. I mean, Reggie is one of my favorites, and you're not supposed to play favorites, but he's been through so much, and he's been unrelenting in his attitude and his belief in our program. Um, he's been a leader throughout, which isn't easy. When you haven't played in two years, yet you're a leader, right? I mean, and if you guys think back, you know, Michigan week, so it's what, week four of the 2021 season, he goes down on the practice field. At that time, he was our best lineman. Right. So he's done some things as of late that get get you excited, like, oh, my goodness, he's, he might actually be able to do this. And yes, I'd love to have him back for our team. But as much as he's been through, I just hope he gets to play for his sake because he has sacrificed so much. And I can't even tell you like, the hours he has spent rehabbing his injury. I don't know how many people would do it, to be frank with you. He has just made up his mind that this is what he's going to do. So uh, he's in my prayers all the time. That, uh, that this can happen. And it certainly would help our line if he can come back even close to what he was. He immediately helps us. So it, it, it could be really good for everybody. So 